Thank you. All right. So now um, I think that's the end of the transport ones. Thank you very much indeed for um, providing support on all of those. Thanks very much. Um, now let's step back to item 24, the Templeton Cemetery and Sports Park Development Plan. So this is item 24, a recommendation from the Hallswell Hornby Ricketon Community Board. Sorry, Andrew, if you don't mind moving on, we just have to find the relevant staff member. Um, All right, so we'll come back to 24. Um, have we got the people in the room that we need to do um, 26? Lancaster. Lancaster Park. Yep, we've got Kelly and Andrew. <coughs> I thought this was pretty clear. Okay. Is it not? Um, let's, let's deal with 26 first and jump back to 24. There's no particular reason to do them in any particular order. Um, given that we've got staff here for 26, let's do 26 next. So this is the Lancaster Park spatial plan and a recommendation from the community board. Now, we've got a suggested new recommendation here. So is that what we've got up on the board in front of us? OK. So this is different than the recommendation that came from the community board. All right, so let's work on that basis. No, so I don't think that the <coughs> I think that uh, you weren't, didn't you once come up today in the pre-briefing? So it was no, uh, number two was meant to be note. It's a noting. Moment. Yeah, it was a noting. No, so noting uh, any future landscape plans for Lancaster Park. <coughs> through to landscape. No, leave landscape. So noting any future landscape plan for Lancaster Park to the Waikato. So that means the community board are made aware <laughs> of anything that's going on, which you would imagine they would be anyway. Yeah. Noting any future landscape plan for Lancaster Park it's will go to... ...be considered by rather than... Well, yeah, go to. yeah, so it would be considered by the board. Yeah. Yeah. Request staff to report back to council. Request staff to provide the incoming council with an update on the sports, sports facilities plan. That's the correct name of that plan, isn't it? In order to ensure there's a framework for decision making around future use, request staff to develop a communication plan for areas neighbouring Lancaster Park containing proposed timetable for demolition and information on what will happen after demolition. Yeah, great. All right. So working on the basis of that second set of um, resolutions then, um, is there any commentary from staff on this before we move to questions? Um, just a commentary on the, the second point there about the delegations. Um, you know, once the spatial plan is approved, it's considered that the, um, the park then moves from being a metropolitan facility to being something that just affects the um, local community, which is why um, uh, approval of any future landscape plan would, would automatically be delegated to the community board, subject to council um, funding, because approval of landscape plans the delegation to the community board is if they're within the budget. So it'll be subject to um, council funding. All right, that might lead to, that statement might lead to questions. Um, and if it does, that's, that's fine. Um, so shall we move into questions now? So um, Dion and then Yanni. Dion. What happens to the park area when the demolition finishes and between, well, sorry, between the demolition finishing and getting funding to do the landscape plan? So the park will move out of, there's, there's another, you're probably aware that the buildings are coming down, the vertical's coming down now. Um, there's another uh, package of work that's in the process of being developed and tendered which deals with the foundations which are quite substantive and following that um, there will be a effectively a greening of the site um, to enable community access. <coughs> And just subsequent question, how much is that greening of the land cost? And well, it hasn't been fully costed yet because we don't... There's so many unknowns in terms mm. of what, how the site's going to transition through these phases. Yeah. So because it wouldn't, wouldn't be stupid to sort of try and tie that work into future work? Would it not be 
unreasonable to tie the greening of you know to give it access into some of the future kind of work, or is that completely? I think different? Uh, it's effectively like many demolition projects. The site is left in an accessible manner. For example, there's been housing projects, you know, council housing projects where the site has then been greened for for appropriate use. Yeah. Um, so. The, the project schemes that we have at the moment, so the demolition project finishes with the land being uh, remediated to the point that public access is available. So it doesn't get left as a fenced off mm. redundant site. Yeah, but what I'm saying is they're not opportunities to start if we're, we've got a landscape plan that we're working towards to do so, tie some of that work into. It will be there after will be. council has been presented with enough information to make sound decisions on budgeting through the annual planning process. And so the spatial plan yeah. is being proposed to be adopted now. Mm -hmm. That gives staff the signal to carry on on the yeah. basis of that spatial plan yeah. and bring back information to council to make decisions on future budgets. Okay, I don't think that's quite what I was asking. Like, I, we're going to have to do some work to flatten it and grass it. That's underway as part of the demolition yeah. project. But as part of that, can you not start doing some of the? Yeah. The landscaping stuff. That work will certainly be guided by this spatial plan. It'll be consistent with that spatial okay. plan, absolutely. If you, yeah, if you, if you, if you sort of focused to, on the practical, yeah. it'll yeah. be obviously subject to whatever residual budget may mm. or may not be available from the demolition project. Yeah. <coughs> so it's important that we proceed, develop mm. the future plans, present the budgeting requirements for the different phases so that we can have a seamless integrated approach. Okay, that would be the main thing. Thank you. Yanni. Thank you. Um, the demolition's going quite well. I understand it's a little bit behind because of maybe weather, but it's sort of catching up. Can you just um, advise when you think the demolition will be complete, like what the target is? Well, the target for the vertical is, is December this year. Right. The package for the foundations is not being released and awarded yet. Okay. Um, but the, the time frame for that, um, should, it sh my understanding is it should be achieved within six months. So the aim is to have six the site months. in a green and accessible okay. state um, by the following December. Right. So the key thing is if we consider the funding for next year's draft annual plan, yes. um, which is, gets approved on the, sort of, by the 1st of July, it should time in nicely with the consideration of the point that Dion's making is, um, you know, once that demolition is getting to a certain point, then you can possibly use some cost savings or synergies around how it's left to get some sort of something positive happening on it. That's the intent, yes. Right. Um, the second question is, I thought we had a communications plan around this. Is that, so we don't really need to say ask you to develop one, we've got one. Yep. What I think is important coming out of today though, I guess, is just some clarity around the next steps of this process and how they align with the demolition in terms of the future use. Well, we can certainly update the, you know, following this um, decision today, we can certainly update the plan to make sure that we can provide, I guess, a little bit more clarity on timing. Yeah. Because yeah, clearly that's, that's of high interest to people. I think that's really important, just around, you know, here's the future decision point, so we'll consult on a landscape plan and we'll approve it on X amount, you know, on this particular date. Um, we'll make the consideration of the funding as part of yeah. X date, um, and depending on that, that will obviously inform sure. the progress on the... I think you can take it as read that that's the intent. Obviously we're being a little bit cautious, I mean this is the biggest demolition project that's ever occurred in New Zealand, so that it's a yeah. challenging project. Sure. So we, we're not we're not wishing to overpromise. Yeah. No, I totally but, understand that. Yeah. Um, but absolutely, we will yeah. update the communication plan so that the public are well aware right. of what's going on. And the other question I had around the funding is: Is there any work going on with the places like the Christchurch Foundation or Rata? You know, given the significance of the site, any sort of <laughs> consideration of external funding applications being considered? Um, I did think of the Earthquake Appeal Trust, which I know was looking for heritage sort of projects ready to go, um, but 
Is anyone kind of looking at what are the external opportunities for funding? No, look, we haven't to date, and okay. um, I don't think we'd get very far until we had some slightly more concrete plans from from council anyway about what the future right. looks like. So once we adopt this, though, you've kind of got that. Look, the option's always there to go to, to fundraising foundations, whether it meets their criteria or not. I would have to work with my colleague right. in Reckon Sport to uh, determine okay. whether or not it's worthy of going yeah. down that route. And final question from me is just under number four. We, when is the sports facilities plan coming back to council? Can we talk to that, Kel? <laughs> Stop laughing, Brian. Yeah. Um, we um, have got extra capacity in the team now, so it's something that we will reinvigorate, and we should have, I'm um, aiming to have a draft ready by the end of the year that we can bring back to the new council. Right. So any sort of consideration of current sports projects, sports fields, for example, that are currently on budget for this year or next year, can they, will they be fed in as part of that process? Like, we're not going to start on new projects to parks now without... Seem to have now moved into questions about the sports facilities plan rather than about Lancaster Park. I think these are questions when we get to the update that's referred to in um, paragraph 4 that would be appropriate for that session rather than this session. Except if the money's going to be spent in the meantime, which has been part of the problem with the delay to this plan, that all these other parks are getting upgraded without the plan. And so I, I just want to kind of understand whether we're going to expend money on sports facilities in the meantime before the plan comes back, or whether we can consider what the needs are and then look at the existing funding that we have on budget, not just additional funding. So look, we continue we to... Um, work on our work program which is still remediation of earthquake related issues mostly so i don't see that there's going to be any conflict between the work we're doing now and what the plan will bring back to the table okay thank you any further questions all right so can i get a mover um for these resolutions please well, can deal I suggest that four gets altered slightly to pick up on the points that were raised so what oh, sorry, five. alterations five. do you want? So five, number five, yeah. the communication plan. Yeah. I think it's just request staff to provide um, public information over the key milestones for the, for the future progress. Wasn't that proposed timeline? Well, I think they've got that for the demolition, but it's really around... And, and what's happening after the demolition? Yeah. Doesn't that cover it? A proposed timeline for demolition and information on what's happening after the demolition? Well, if you want, but I don't think they need to develop a communication plan. They already have one. They just need to to provide the information with the new, you know, so following the adoption of the special request plan. staff to uh, provide appropriate informa uh, communication or something, or yeah. to communicate to the wiring areas. No, they don't, he doesn't want a communication plan. He wants communication. No, well, I do, so but you've already got one. Well, what if I we said I don't want to create a <laughs> new one when you've already got so one? So just develop and implement a communication plan? Well, do you have one or not? I thought you already had one. Request staff communicate uh, with areas neighbouring. So communicate with areas neighbouring. Straight take out. You could just put update the and communications the plan yeah. to include the next steps after yeah, the adoption of this? the... Request staff session. communicate with areas neighbouring campaign. Lancaster Park. Um, it's not that area. It's not just the areas naming either. It's, no, on, it's a sports group. On proposed timeline, take out containing. That's cool. I mean, staff can interpret it. On, I think it's pretty yeah, clear. The proposed, on the proposed timetable for demolition and information on what will happen after demolition. Request staff communicate with areas neighbouring Lancaster Park. So you're wanting it broader than just areas neighbouring Lancaster well, Park? Well, it's all the sports groups that are looking to know, you know, if it's going to go ahead, when they might be able to well, use it or, and, uh, you know, the general community as well, but, <coughs> yeah. Key stakeholders and areas. And areas. Yeah. Areas neighbouring. Yeah, yep, that's, yep, that's good. So you're happy with that. Dion is the mover. You're happy with that. Yeah, all right. Yanni, I'm assuming you're happy to second this, given that you put so much. Effort yeah, I was happy wording. to move it, but yeah, happy to second. Okay, it. so move Dion second. Yanni. Yeah. Um, I just wondered if you wanted to put a date on the report back under um, three. 
So we consider the draft annual plan generally in December. It gets adopted in February. I think we need to. I think I think that is, is clear. clear enough. So we've had issues in the past when we haven't had dates that things come back. <laughs> but this is this has a date because it has to be in time for consideration in the draft. There's the two plan. interpretations of that. So what happened with the DCs one, for example? Let's not. So, okay, let's that's, we, we don't need the examples. It's just what do you need? What do you need well, here? Well, can staff to be just give us an idea of the date that that would come back roughly? No, no. I think this is sufficient. February. I think this is saying that we will get a plan back to you. We don't know what uh, how the new council will prioritise things as long as this is back in time for you to consider in your plan. Do we need to say December or January or February? It's as long as it's back. I'm just in time. sorry. All I'm trying to ascertain is whether it's going to be in time to inform us adopting the draft annual plan or it's going to be in time for us adopting the final draft annual plan. Because one date is in draft. June, in draft. and to one is in To be considered oh, in March. the draft. So do we want to say to be in considered the in the... Yes, there, in the draft. In in the December draft annual plan. So, it'll so be, that's draft. It'll be considered before right. we approve the draft. Yeah. Right, OK, that's good. So, yeah. yep, that's Not fine. Not in the final, it says it there, it's in okay. the draft. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're happy with that. We've got a mover and we've got a seconder. Is there any debate on this? Dion. Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, if you go down to Lancaster Park at the moment, it's quite a surreal sight. It really uh, looks almost apocalyptic um, in, in, in its presentation. And it is quite sad, but it's actually an exciting opportunity now that we have to create another green space, especially for around this area. Uh, that's quite commercial. But the point that I was trying to make before is that I do want to see some seamless transition from the end of the demolition um, and into what we are going to be doing into the future, rather than just stop, start and having to you know, double track some of this, maybe greening the area and stuff like that. So if we can try and get that done um, seamlessly, I think that would be um, a good outcome and would speed the whole thing up, hopefully. So give us some pressure to do stuff. That's all. Thank you. Yanni. Yeah, I, I first off just want to acknowledge the staff who have been involved with the demolition. I, I have to say I'm immensely proud of the way in which they've handled that. Um, they have done an excellent job, uh, both in terms of controlling the cost, but also um, in terms of the disruption to the local neighbourhood. I think it was mentioned by staff that this is the biggest demolition we've seen in New Zealand, or one, one of. Um, and I have to say the disruption to the local community has, has been very, very much minimised, um, which I think is really a tribute to the way it's been uh, handled. Um, but what's really important and what's really clear is that this community has lost assets. It's lost its school and it's lost its stadium. And it was a community that was incredibly proud to have the stadium, it had one of the best relationships out of any local residence group and stadium in the country, if not probably the world. Uh, they were a community that Really, part of their identity was Lancaster Park, and so it's really important that we, we put something back there that can do them proud, given that they've lost so much. We've done it in most of the other areas, like Kiwi 2, for example, um, and I think there's no reason why we shouldn't do that here. So it's really important that we keep progress on developing these plans, uh, and we have clear funding timelines in place to consider the funding, and I'm really glad that we've got a resolution to do it as part of the draft annual plan as opposed to the long-term plan which was initially suggested. Um, but the other point I think it's really important is we do need to get our facilities plan in place um, because a lot of the sports codes will help us with investment around our sports facilities if we have a clear plan and can work with them. And so that's really, really critical. This is a community that has also faced a huge amount of social change with the huge intensive housing. Uh, and we've also got the central city, which there's an ambitious target of 20,000 people living in. So this green space is really, really needed in this area. It will be needed to meet the future demands of recreational opportunities, uh, and it is something where we need activity, positive activity happening, rather than what's happening on the ground at the moment. So I welcome this moving forward. I think it's great news that this isn't being sold off for a retirement home or for industrial land development. This is actually keeping a recreational asset, a significant one in our city, and in a community that deserves it. So I really look forward to the next stage of this. I do commend staff for working with the local stakeholders. I think what you see in front of you for the spatial plan is a really good combination of meeting the sporting club's needs and the local community and recreation needs. And I think it's a fantastic 
plan to go forward with. So um, this clearly is where we move from um, dereliction to demolition and now from demolition to a, a future for this site and it's good to have something in front of us that is looking forward to some, some better times for you know this site which is hugely important to the city not least because of its social heritage. Um, but agreed with Yani, these are um, the neighbouring communities or communities that have had a hard time. Um, I used to live in that part of town and used to walk past the site that we're talking about just about every day. Um, it is good to be able to have a, a positive um, conversation about what this might look like in the future and to begin to build some confidence around a future for the site. So um, I'm happy to support this today, realising that this is one step in what will be a journey to a successful outcome for this particular site. So I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Against. That's carried.